few winters back, we had a swell come up and I surfed one afternoon and I tossed my board in the backyard and then the next day, a snowstorm had moved in and the waves were good and I get my suit on and we had over a foot of snow. I can't find my surfboard <laughs> in the backyard. <laughs> like shoveling and looking for it. And then finally I found the leash and grabbed it and then had to ice scrape it. And I'm like, that's stuff that just doesn't happen in other, other areas. I think a lot of people, when they think of a New England winter, it's the cold, unpredictable weather, snow and ice. Not a lot of people think of it as a surfing destination. California, Hawaii. But there's a lot of times we get great surf in the winter. If you have a good swell and the winds are gonna be good, then it doesn't matter whether it's 90 degrees out or whether it's three degrees out, you're gonna go out. And then you're in the water and it's like, you're just waiting for the next wave and you're you know, stepping into another dimension. First time I caught a wave. It was not the biggest wave, but it was the, the best natural high I'd, I'd ever had in my life. The first time I remember was probably when I was like three or four. I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. I remember everything about it, the surfboard, where I was. Seeing it building and knowing that you're gonna just keep cruising right down that wave. Oh, here we go, yes! Once you're in the wave and you feel that the momentum take you, now it's time to play a little bit. You almost have that feeling it doesn't count unless someone sees it. You know, that's why you're like, that, that was the one. You bring somebody out for their first time, and you're like, just give it a chance. And they're falling, and they're swimming, and they're seeing waves go underneath them, and they're going over the front of the board, and they're falling. I went left, I remember grabbing my rail, some, my brother yelling, grab your rail, and in a sense you're like, I know that's never gonna happen again, but I'm gonna search for it. I'm gonna get another one like it. You know? oh, if I could just get a couple of those again. <laughs> yes. My name is Melinda Ferreira. I am a doctor and an acupuncturist. I'm married and I have a little boy. I'm someone that's tried to avoid cold my entire life, so it's kind of ironic that I'm surfing in the winter now. When you go out into the water and you're looking out to the horizon, the sun is rising, versus if you're on the west coast and, you know, the sun is setting. To be able to be out in the morning at first light, which is usually about 30 minutes before the sun comes up, as the day is starting, the lights are just spectacular. I'm a, a trained yoga teacher from, you know, well in my past, and one of the styles that I was actually trained in teaching was yoga for surfers, because we're all kind of like sitting on our boards and kind of we're, we're paddling and everything's forward rolled. So that style of yoga is intended to kind of just open things up, open your hips, open your chest, just so you'll be more comfortable and maybe be surfing into your 60s and 70s and 80s, like a lot of the people that I surf with. The last thing I do is pull my hood up and it is kind of like game time, you know, like it's and I, you know, kind of tuck my, my hair into my hood and once you pull that hood on in October or November, you know that hood's going to be coming up um, until like May. <laughs> Growing up on the South Shore of Boston, I had no idea that, that surfing even existed in New England. We'd go to the Cape, you know, every summer, but the Upper Cape, so I, I'd never seen a surfboard in New England. My husband and I were dating in college, and he grew up um, in Northampton, and we were driving along 1A one day, and I said, oh, look at those beautiful seals in the water right off the coast, and he's like, those are surfers, and I'm like, what? I started surfing when I was 29. The first time I went surfing, my husband and I set up lessons through Cinnamon Rainbows, and it was like a beautiful weekend in May. 
The next weekend, as typical in New England, it was like 40 degrees out and like hailing wind and rain and, and we both w woke up hungover. And uh, <laughs> we were like, oh, thank God, you know, they're never gonna take us out in this. And we went down to the shop to just politely like reschedule and stuff. The guy who took us out for a lesson was like, you guys stoked or what? You know, and I'm we're like, no. I was pushed into the first wave and just completely wiped out, but he pushed me into the second wave and I got up and it was a, a life changer for me because it, it changed the way I looked at a lot of things. I get a little bit emotional now because it's, uh, you know, I was kind of going down a, a path that a lot of people had in my family with alcohol and different things and just not great habits. The second I got up in that wave, I knew that I wanted to have a reason to get up like early in the morning to get up on my board in the sunrise and to be up and be healthier and it's changed everything. My, my friends and family know like if I've surfed or not because I'm just like, ah, I'm wagging my tail the rest of the day. When you go out into the water and you're looking out to the horizon, the sun is rising. To be able to see that come up from your board in zero degree temperatures or less is, I don't know how to describe it. I would imagine it's like an astronaut like looking back towards Earth and just being like, what am I looking at? To me, a very spiritual experience and I think it's an indescribable feeling. You're standing and you're walking and you're dancing on water. I haven't really realized what I've looked like on a board until people started like taking pictures. With different sports and stuff, like people can be like have a more aggressive style or a lighter style, and that's the beautiful thing about surfing is you can make it your own thing. I lost my mom to, to breast cancer when I was 14, so I, I think that ever since then I've been hyper aware, again, not in a bad way of just my own mortality. When you have a healthy body, to be able to use it and to be out in the ocean, but to be with nature. And I think from a physical standpoint, you know, I've, I've met so many people that are my age or younger and they know they're in their final stages of life and they'd give anything, I think, to, to be in the ocean, up at sunrise or, or doing the most that we can with what we have. And quite often when I'm out there, I, I think of a lot of the people that I'm working with that you know are kind of at the twilight of their life and, and I'm not sure what I have left in front of me, but that's actually more of a reason that I'm not taking for granted that I'm gonna have another 60 years or so. I'd love to make it to triple digits, but just in case, I wanna have every single bit of my life that I can used as, as well as I can. And surfing's been a beautiful part of that for me. When a wave comes in, when I'm out there looking east, I know that my friends and family in Ireland are sharing like that same ocean over there. We're sharing the same body of water and that that wave, whatever wave I end up on that I'm having fun with has had this entire life in front of it before it came to, to, to come to its end on the seacoast of New Hampshire. And I'm just like, wow, like we're gonna end this together. And then the wave crashes and you're going back out and I might see you again somewhere else on earth. People do think you're pretty insane for getting out there at, you know, when it's 18 degrees outside. You know, you'll run across them coming out to just, you know, they think they're gonna go to the beach and take pictures, and there's three knuckleheads in wetsuits. I'm gonna take a picture of you guys. Oh, my daughter lives in LA. Oh, Her boyfriend grew up in Monterey and surfs. I take a picture of you guys, and he's, you know what? he's gonna go, what the hell is wrong with the best condition? I love it. Keeps people out of the water. <laughs> oh my God. Surfing is as fun as you decide to make it. And that's why I think it's one of those sports that is different than a lot of other ones. Stairway to heaven. It reminds me like when you used to take your bikes into the woods when you were 
10 years old and you'd ride around and like do whatever. As I'm walking into the water, I think to myself, am I really doing this? The thing that's changed over the years is this technology and wetsuits. You have to know exactly kind of how to put things on before your hands and your, your body parts start to freeze. I took a wave to the face and like the water's 35 degrees. I'm like, Ugh! Taking three shots of espresso and running right after another, you're like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> your lips, everyone looks horrific because like nobody can smile because your face is frozen. Like, this is just too cold. Like, I'm just gonna go back out. Oh cool, somebody else. Like somebody else to talk to you. Someone else is like freezing their ass off. Oh, what's up? You're roughing it too? Nice to meet you. <laughs> the backs of my gloves had ice forming over them. I didn't know that seawater could do that. And he knocked the keys on the back behind his tire and he, he couldn't get them. His hands were frozen and he was like, I'm gonna die. Yeah. In die the parking lot right next here. to my car. And it's like, my wife's gonna be like, you idiot. You died like next to your car. And like, not even in the water. You're doing this shimmy trying to free that shoulder up. You've got a choice to make. You could either sit in your, your disgusting neoprene wetsuit with the cold water that you probably peed in and like, you're gonna wear it home for another half hour, 40 minutes, whatever the drive is, and then take it off at home, or you can get out of it right away and put it in the back of the car. This is when you know it's happening. I'm throwing off my gloves, and you're like, that's it. <laughs> Time to freeze. My name is Edgar Garcia, originally from Guadalajara, Mexico. Moved to Southern California in Newport Beach, Orange County when I was about 13 years old. And, uh, you know, moved here to Newburyport in New England just in September of 2020, right when the pandemic was happening. How cold am I actually gonna be today? <laughs> Pretty cold. Growing up in Mexico was great. I was a couple hours from the beach, but uh, we had a uncle that was obsessed with going to the beach. This is how you picture it when you live in California. You're like, oh, there's a little bit of grass and a little wooden fence. Being in the ocean, that was tranquility. Yeah. Well, my first time trying surfing was probably around 12 in Mexico, but the beach was a little bit far away, so we I had limited access to it. I want to do a snow angel before I jump in. And then moving to Orange County and Newport Beach, it really opened up all the doors for me. I live about a mile from the beach. I remember asking my dad before we moved to the U.S. We need to either have the beach or a pool because my dad's huge in the water. He used to do 10 meter Olympic diving. Better than just sitting at home and freezing for no reason. <laughs> when we moved here, my dad was like, we're almost to the beach. And I was like, oh my God, where are we? This giant freeway in California, the 55 freeway leading into Newport Beach. And for a long time, my dad was like, we did it. You know, we came to the beach. So it was My toes are already numb. I felt like we were achieving the American dream, you know? Moving to California and being an outsider and looking different had a, I, had a big effect. I didn't speak English, so, you know, surfing. It was one of my ways to make friends with all the local kids that everybody went to the beach. We didn't need to understand each other. All we needed to understand was the, the passion for being in the water and trying to go surfing. Oh my gosh, it's like me deep. You know, California can be tough. People are very territorial. They, they believe the beach belongs to them and you know, some new outsider kid from Mexico, you know, it was one of the first places I actually encountered racism. Get out of here, you don't belong here. This isn't your beach and, you know, luckily the, the people who were close to me in the area felt different. You know, we stuck up for each other and there was a lot of, a lot of times where I, I had to defend myself. You're not gonna let somebody get in the way of, you know, getting in the water. <laughs> All my friends in California and Mexico think I'm wild. You take a snow shovel with you sometimes to go surfing to, in case you have to snow shovel a parking spot out. That sounds crazy. <laughs> the few friends I have here or the few friends that I can talk to and hang out with are my friends that I've either met surfing or a buddy has introduced me to because they surf and it's kind of fun creating like a new community for yourself and finding people. 
I don't necessarily think there's as many people who are willing to go out in the cold and do this. So it's it's kind of fun finding those people that are want to have that fun and just yeah. creating that community again. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Scott. Edgar. Edgar, nice, nice to, to meet you, buddy. Yeah. Good to yeah. meet you. Nice to meet you, dude. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Pretty new to the area, but. It's beautiful. Have you found all the surfing spots up there yet? Because I've heard I, like Plum Island is good. Yeah, actually I surfed Plum Island right when we moved here. I have a buddy back home that used to always say, he'd catch a good wave or we'd have a good session and he'd say, we're having a surf date after this. We got to talk about it. <laughs> And a good morning. It's Sunday, January 16th. Bitterly cold conditions continue across the region, currently negative one degrees, with a real feel of minus four. Yes. The winds are perfect. Yeah, today's going to be really sweet. Isaac Hamilton and I've been paddle boarding for a little over three years now. I'm Ben Woodhouse. I live in Northampton. I'm new to stand-up paddle boarding. There's a lot of people that I work with and when they find out that I do paddle surfing, no one says, oh that's so cool. Maybe somebody says that. But what I get it most often is, you should try surfing. <laughs> When you're on a stand-up paddleboard, you have way more opportunity to catch waves. That Sunday morning is a morning that I will never forget. The way that the steam was coming off the ocean. I've heard Isaac describe it as hot soup. It's a great description. I wish it was hot, though. It's not. The clouds on the horizon the way the light was hitting the waves in the atmosphere. The angle of the light, it was catching the waves in a way so that when I was facing the beach, I could see the wave coming because it was casting a shadow in front of me. And I knew exactly when I needed to start paddling hard and getting into position. Your, your feet are right underneath your shoulders. Your, your chest is facing the front and then you have to hop into a surf position. The timing of that is critical. So having all those tells from the wave saying, hey, this wave is coming and now you really gotta start cranking with the paddle. And once your board comes in contact with that wave, it just locks in and I'm hooked. I'm a junkie for it. I keep, I keep wanting more and more of it. And I watch this guy get after it and I'm like, I'll be, I'll be Isaac someday. Maybe a few more years, but I'm, I'll get there. But then I'll be better. Yeah, you will. So you'll never quite yeah. catch me. I'm going to surpass you one. <laughs> My name is Jacob Edwards. I prefer to go by Jake. I'm originally from Southern California area. I'm in the military currently as a corpsman working at a hospital, and that's why I'm out here in Newport, Rhode Island. I started surfing when I was like three or four, and my dad would just push me into the waves. I think about five or six, I was consistently surfing, and by the time I was like eight, nine, ten, like I had my own board, and my dad would like trust me to go out on smaller days, and bigger days we go together. I never lived in a in a cold climate. Oh, oh! And you come to New England, it's like dark, murky water and hurricanes and winter swell. I just want to buy some crappy Craigslist board and just surf. I do get a lot of like flack for surfing on a foam board at like a world-renowned beach. And you gotta kind of prove your spot there. I wish I appreciated surfing more when I was a kid. Your dad wants to spend time with you, but then you're also a kid, you want to hang out with your friends and family. But unfortunately, my dad's not here with me, but I'm still out there, like, I mean, living through him. I wish he could see me surfing in the snow, because that would be, you know, it'd be cool for him.
the region is bracing to be hit with a nor'easter this weekend, starting tomorrow night and running to Saturday temperatures night. in the 20s. Expecting a mix of sun and clouds tomorrow with temperatures staying put. And on Friday, multi-facet storm. It's not just going to be heavy snow. It's going to be really strong winds, uh, 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts, maybe even higher. So power outages are possible for Cape Cod and the islands possibly uh, near whiteout conditions at time. Coastal flooding is also a possibility. I'm originally from upstate New York. I live in Rye. I've been surfing off and on since like high school. It can be June, it can be August, it can be January. Surfing and the water and, and the ocean and the beach are a big part of our family life. As the kids were growing, they've always been gone to the beach. Being in the ocean and the water, you know, I remember the first time my daughter had a board, just sitting there was when she's like six months. What gets me super stoked when I see a kid and like, you know, they're taking off on that wave and it's a little too big and it's like, they're probably a little scared and it's a little bit too much for them. But then they take off, they claw into it and they like pop up and they, you know, they land it, right? And then they may even just go straight down the line, but that's it. But you know that that was like, that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be the story of the dinner table for the next month and a half or something. The best moment of winter surf is actually counterintuitively when it's snowing, because it's like you get that like super quiet and the snow is coming down. It's very just like Ansel Adams. Like imagine that in the ocean and then top of that, it's like super clean with a super nice wave and there's not a ton of people and you look around and it's just like, it's just like the magic moment. There are not a lot of folks who look like me surfing. I mean, there's more, which is cool. Here in New England, everyone has been overall usually very um, open. Sometimes you get mistaken for somebody else, but uh, I don't really stress on that. In fairness, we're all, especially in the winter, like covered in neoprene, hoods, whatever, so it's like this. You know, there have been moments, but it's never been about what I look like, unless, you know, I'm wearing like a pretty crappy wetsuit or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay still? High tide is at 9.15 tomorrow morning. And I'm gonna pull up Cable Beach. The only issue with Cable would be the parking situation. I'll see if they uh, if they plowed it. It's closed, then I'll just head Did south. we go straight to Salisbury? As long as there's some space in between some of the waves, we'll be good. You know what I'm hoping for? Is that it's fun, that's all and it's as fun as you decide yeah, to make it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, let's do it. Oh, my God. under my hands. My name is Pam and I moved here to Maine like almost six years ago. I grew up in Mexico City. I grew up in like the border between like one side is like a lack of resources. Immediately you cross and there's more wealthy people or like there's more money there. Mexico City was definitely challenging in different ways. 
especially as a woman, always having to watch your back. At the same time, it was just magical. There's a lot of diversity there in so many ways. People from literally all over the world, and it was just learning from them a lot. I did grow up going to the water a lot, mostly because of my mom's job. She's a scientist. They used to send her a lot to like conferences, true events in Cancun. And my mom's like, it's so hard to get you out of the water. The way I think myself as a creative is mostly an all over the place kind of creative person. And I think that probably comes from the fact that I do have ADHD, so I like to be like everywhere and I can focus on one thing, otherwise I get bored. When I moved to Maine, like my whole creative self like exploded. So I start painting. I start painting skateboards. I started painting just like outside, seeing if anyone wanted a mural or something. And I found a lot of people that were really interested in that. I realized Maine is actually a pretty artistic state in general. When you get a surfboard that it's custom for you and you look at it and it's it's not like a board you get from the shelf in the store. It's like special because it's tailored to you. You put a little bit of yourself in it. So it like becomes more of a treasure. I painted an owl because my mom when I was younger used to call me her little owl, like a kululu, which is a word for little owl in like a native language in Mexico. She called me that way because I, I had like really big eyes when I was a kid. She was like, you're my little Kululu, you're like all over the place. When I left Mexico, of course the, the thing that I've been missing the most is family. So like bringing that part with me is just like having my mom out there. Sorry. I came here alone, so. It's just like that feeling, of like just remembering where you come from and like the people you left behind and like the ones you miss, especially Evan, your mother. The first time I tried surfing, it was in Maine. I didn't have a job. I was waiting for my paperwork to be all set. And I went to the beach one day and I noticed all these people surfing out there. And I was like, huh. I start going like from surf shop to surf shop, like just asking like, hey, um, I'm a designer and all I wanna do is learn to surf and I wanna get out there. I'll trade you anything. I'll paint boards and you let me out in the water. And I got lucky with Black Point Surf Shop. They kindly like lent me and gave me access to this sport that I was like really willing to try. The first time being actually surfing was terrifying. Looking at everyone out there, and every time I see someone, they were like, catch a wave, and I was like, that looks so easy. And I didn't last long either, because it was cold for me. I think also I got really lucky with the community. People that will approach and I was like, hey, uh, do you mind if I give you some pointers? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. They have like the right concept of what surfing is, which is sharing. And that's when Men Women Surf came. Men Women Surf is a platform to encourage women to get out in the water. More than a platform, it's to create the access for those who can't to like actually be in the water. One of the biggest privileges that I think that exists is you already have a community here you feel more comfortable if you have that community. But what happens with immigrants, with refugees, who would love to try that, but they don't have a community, they're still building their own community, that's when it becomes even more hard for them to like get out there. And that's when I also realized it's not about just being underrepresented. Things shifted for Men Women Surf, and it was not more about just focusing on the surfers that were already out there. It was more about like really sharing that with the ones that don't even know they could be doing this. 
and it actually changed its name to More Women Surf rather than just Maine, to like just be more inclusive with everyone else. Whenever I see some of the girls that actually, that really kept on it, it just feels like, like we did something good. I see you and that is great and that makes me feel not alone. When I'm in the ocean, I realize more than ever what, how small I am in the best way, and that you're part of something so much bigger. It's just the most beautiful thing on earth, and it's a place where I go to feel at home. It's a place I go to escape. It's a place I go to be with people in my life that are no longer here anymore. It's such a life-giving place to me. Ocean to me, a classic like Mother Ocean. I mean, and not because of surf, but just everything. The ocean has that is telling you like, yeah, have fun, have fun, but hey, I'm watching you. Gives you the love, but it, it's tough love sometimes. So where does surfing rank in your life in terms of like how important is surfing to you? Is my wife gonna watch this? <laughs> I surfed my first winter at 15. When the waves are good, I'm still as excited to go out as I have been. You never really lose that stoke. Until I can't push myself up anymore, I think I'll, I'll be out there even if I'm freezing. <laughs> it's as natural to me or as much a part of my day if I can do it as breathing and, and eating. I'm forever grateful for it. Tell me, are there secret surf spots? I swear to God, it's not by coincidence that when like really good swells come in, that all of a sudden the surf camps are down. Because <laughs> they're like, stay away, nothing to see here, you know? A secret is a secret, and you can tell. <laughs> but yes, they are. <laughs> if you direct message people and they're like, leave you little breadcrumbs, <laughs> you can kind of like figure it out. You show up to a spot and everyone's like, what are you doing here? And it's like, come on, man. You're off the highway, like everybody can see this. I feel like a like a, a school kid when people are like, don't say anything, and I'm like, but everybody should know. 